have to use to solve those problems. And if you don't know, then you don't know where to start. If you know that every percent problem is either looking for the part, the whole, or the percent, you can always use that proportion. You set it up right, you multiply and divide right, you are going to always get the answer. Remember that the shortcut is that if you have to multiply or divide by the hundred, you're not going to actually put it in a box and do it. You're going to do it by moving the decimal point. If you're multiplying by a hundred, you're going to move it how many times? And if you're multiplying, which direction? To the right. If you're going to divide by a hundred, you're going to move it how many places? Two times to the left is correct. That makes it very, a lot easier. Because a lot of times you'll end up, especially when it's talking about tax, you'll end up with a number like, like this, um, or you may end up with 116, and then you want to know how much is the part. When you have to divide that by 100, people sometimes get confused when you have to divide that by 100. And they'll put a 1 here, and they'll know that, but they won't know what to do with the 16. You'd have to add a decimal point and a 0, bring it down, and it would go again. And bring down another 0, and it would go 6 times. But much easier when you see this, and they say divided by 100, much easier to do this and get your dollar 16 cents right there. Instead of going through all of this and having to add decimals and zeros, people would know that you could keep going and come up with that, and then they wouldn't know where to stop. So it's best to not even try to divide by that 100. Move it over two places, and it is divided by the 100, and you'll get your answer. Okay. So if you have a book, practice that stuff. If you don't have a book, if you have access to the internet, go on Aztec and work on percent. Uh, go on Math Problem Generator to get some practice doing the problems. And we will do some more of this tomorrow as well.